you're gay. You're gay. You're gay. What about my gay? I don't even own a gay. Hmm. Wait, you're Y O U R. You're your a possessive pronoun. Surely this is meant to read Y O U apostrophe R E. Subject and contracted verb pertaining to you are gay. Statement accusatory, mildly homophobic. This can only mean one thing. My arch nemesis, Mr. A. Apostrophe, is on the loose again. Boom, 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 Part man, part pedant, participle, all syntactically correct. Grammar, Grammar cop. cop. Grammar cop. Grammar cop. Hey. Hey you. Hey. Care to explain this sign? Oh. Damn it, woman! Only use apostrophes to show possession, never to indicate plurality. Oh, gee, I don't know how it got there, Mr. Grammar Cop. Mm. Say, will you forgive me? Well, gee, I might let you off. Hey, how about you and me go upstairs, huh? What did you oh. just say? I said, how about you and me go upstairs? <laughs> It's you and I, bitch. Where could Mr. A Thank you. Where could Mr. Apostrophe be storing all of his erroneous punctuation? I head down to the docks to go find out. Mm. I'm gonna cut you up, bitch. I'm gonna cut you up real bad. What did you just say? Oh, 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 Mr. Grammar uh, Um, I just said <laughs> I am going to cut up this pregnant young lady. Really well? Correct. Oh. You get a gold star. Oh, thank you. Proceed. Die, bitch! Ah, 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 ah. Silence. We. I'm, I'm running out of time. Where is Mr. Apostrophe? Bah! Ambushed. Well, gosh, looks like I've kind of trapped you and there's no escape. Nicholas Cage. Dick. Listen in fear as I continue to put the emphasis on the wrong syllable. Got this guy sucks. Nah, grab a cop. I have you at last. <laughs> you shouldn't be here, Mr. Apostrophe. You're always popping up where you don't belong. No, grab a cop. It's you that doesn't belong. This is the age of draft quality emails and automatic spell checking. <laughs> Let me out of here, you freak. Oh, what's this? All alone? Nobody here to help you. Looks like it's just you and I now, Grammar Cop. Damn it! It's you and me! Whoops! Silly me! If only I made less mistakes! It's fewer! Who cares? <laughs> Turns out you're just in time to hear my dastardly plan. Go on. I'm going to put lots of apostrophes at the ends of words so they mean something slightly different. You asshole! Yes! But first... I am going to eat your lower stomach. But, but that would mean... Yes, you will only have a semicolon. <laughs> I needed help. I needed help and fast. Uh, I mean, quickly, shit. <clears throat> only my trusty ally could help me out of this mess. Thesaurus! Hot no! 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 Nicholas! I love you! You were really good in the rock! Curse you, Grammar Cop! Hey, apostrophe, take this! Oh, the Collins Pocket Dictionary? A mere plaything. How about this? Whew. Webster's Leather Bound Braille Edition? I think not, Grammar Cop. 
Have you nothing better for me? Well, yes. As a matter of fact, I have. Hey, apostrophe, conjugate this. No! The British Library! <laughs> Syntax error, bitch. Grandma, we love you. Grandma, we do. Grammar Club, yeah! Up we go. Hello. Hello, thanks very much. Thanks very much. Oh. We have words to say. We're going to rush through them because of time, but thank you. Um, yeah. My name is Jeremy Bidgood. And my name is Lewis Young. And together, we are the Great Puppet Horn. These were the puppets. The horn is ambiguous. Yeah, remember that. Um, our topic is built. We're going to talk about um, how puppetry is good for storytelling, but we're going to focus on why shadow puppets are great for satirical comedy. Um, so basically, The Great Puppet Horn is a satirical shadow puppet show. Um, we're, it's a bit of a niche market, but you know someone's got to do it. Um, so in a nutshell, what we do is we make a lot of uh, little cardboardy characters, and then we jiggle them around on stage, and people laugh. And that's sort of nice. It's nice. It's nice. I like um, it. Sometimes the show is a message, sometimes it's just daft and funny. A bit like that one. That was more yeah. daft and funny. But either way, we always identify more with being comedians than being either puppeteers or social commentators. Although, having said that, I am actually a professional puppeteer. He really is. Yeah. He does that for a day job. Ooh, ooh, I know, I know. It's and I'm a 3D animator, which basically means that I slave away for months to create just mere seconds of content. Uh, it's ever such hard work. It's and like hours. really slow puppetry on a computer. It is it. like doing slow puppetry on a computer. When you see a Pixar, that's effectively what it is. So I was drawn to work with Jeremy because, well, I had half as well. I mean, look at him. He's, he's, he's lovely. And, uh, you know, he's ever so attractive and he's skilled. Oh, um, you know, this isn't a thing, but it could be, well, it isn't. But um, <laughs> he's very skilled and, like, the main reason I wanted to work with him was he suggested shadow puppets might be the way forward. And I thought, yeah, because ha I had half a script for Grammar Cop and that would have taken me about a day to create a second of. Um, but Jeremy and I got together and did it in three days. That's better turnover. And, yeah, and I thought that doing comedy uh, to gigs would mean there may be floozies and, uh, you know, groupies and stuff. Um, hey, hey. No, it's never happened. But we made grammar cop. It's puppets, Lou. What can you expect? Puppets, yeah. Um, but shadow puppets actually have a long uh, history of being used for satire, which was a bit disappointing to discover because we thought we'd been quite original. But, yeah, you know, not. what can you do? Um, so in Indonesia, uh, Wayne Kulit, some of you may know it, but basically um, that's used a lot for sort of social commentary, a bit of political commentary. And in Turkey, in the Middle East, and Greece as well, uh, Kadogoz, this guy up there feeding a, feeding a, feeding a baby, um, it was used for sort of political satire, although less so nowadays. Um, why? Because shadow puppets offer a really simple, iconic sort of set of visuals that um, can really easily and sort of anarchically uh, present many different characters and situations, just like, you know, cartoons such as South Park, Family Guy and The Simpsons do, you know, nowadays. Yes, and The Simpsons creator, Matt Greening, uh, said, uh, Hi, I'm Matt Greening. Um, and he also, more importantly and famously said, uh, that the great memorable characters are those that are distinct and recognisable in silhouette form. And he's right. Look at, for instance, The Simpsons. Look, you can, you can tell who they are at a glimpse. Um, how about Mickey Mouse? You know, we all recognise his silhouettes like two penny pieces on top of well, one two penny and two penny. You know, Mickey Mouse, you recognise him anywhere. Uh, and um, a Popeye, it's very distinct from his ears. We all recognise that one. And, um, and most famously, my favourite characters of late are um, the mascots from the 2012 Olympics. <laughs> Very recognisable silhouette. I have to point out, this is not doctored. This is a wheelchair at 45 degrees. It looks like balls. <laughs> yeah. I normally censor out all the knob gags. Yeah, no, no, no. no. knob jokes. Knob so, jokes. Um, well, no, it's fine. Well, what Greening is highlighting is that character design in animation is all about limitation. So, yeah, what we mean by this is that um, by limiting the amount of information you give to the audience, yeah, um, it's an integral part of storytelling. So uh, authors, directors, playwrights, um, they're constantly limiting the information you give the audience so you can basically filter out all the really boring stuff about life and make sure you, you know, focus in on the important aspects of the character and the story. Yes. Um, but shadow puppetry takes this to a ridiculous extreme. Um, so, like, in animation, uh, you, uh, you design a character and you limit the amount of features you give him, yeah? Um, so that he's easily recognisable as a certain sort of character type. Um, and we do that in shadow puppetry, but at the same time, we can't do all that clever sort of manipulation and emoting that animations do. No. So you get things like this, where we have, like, uh, this, is, um, this, is, this is Margaret Thatcher's head on 
um, on the uh, Queen Alien from James Cameron's Aliens, which is nice. Um, but you know, she doesn't do a lot, she just sort of jiggles around. But then again, we can make guys who are really complicated, have lots of little joints and carefully sort of balanced and can move around lots, but they can only do one thing, you see. So um, if we wanted him to do something else, a distinctly different thing, he would have to make a new puppet. But this isn't a, uh, a flaw in the plan, this is entirely intentional. It's not a handicap, because limitation helps us... <laughs> we're coming to you, don't worry. Helps us define yeah. our characters in a way that's sort of appropriate for satire. So, How about come to me now, motherfucker? Come to me. So, so Sean here, yes. he was a lovely man. Yes. Has a little moving mouth, that's good. But yeah. we have to find something else to make his character a bit more distinct. So, um... <laughs> He's got a little bit of an eyebrow raise, you see. <laughs> yes. I live in the Bahamas, but I support Scottish independence. <laughs> so in many ways, that one moving eyebrow communicates more about his character than if we can actually animate the entirety of his body. Um, yeah. Yes, and the same is true of Grammar Cop, who I almost threw away just then, but we need him. Um, Grammar Cop, look, he's loosely based on my father, who literally shoots down... No, not literally. He shoots people down still, including my mother, for a poor sentence structure. Um, but take Grammar Cop's face. He has no nose. And this is for the following reasons. Um, one, he's loosely affiliated with Robocop, the person slash robot, uh, who also has no nose. Uh, two... For those who are paying attention, Grammar Cop was hit in the face with a radioactive subordinate clause. So, you know, that would flatten a nose, surely. And three, when I was cutting Grammar Cop out of a piece of card with a Stanley knife, I did accidentally cut off his nose. Well, what Lewis is actually saying is that we um, designed Grammar Cop very carefully to show that he had a fat nose. That, like, it shows his complete emotional detachment. No yeah. uh, attachment to any emotion. I like that. That's a lie. Anyway, um... <laughs> Yes. Uh, here is another of our characters who we'll get introduced very quickly through the medium of puppetry. <laughs> Billy, you rock my world. Oh, Jack, I love you so much, but really, global warming is rocking our world. Well, I know I was speaking metaphorically, but oh. we've left that behind, Billy. Oh. We'll float this iceberg to a new life. A land we can call home. Home. You're so beautiful tonight, Billy. Your fur is soft and shining, and your nose is glistening in the moonlight. Oh, Jack. Look, Billy, I'm not going to make it. What? You're going to have to go on without me. Oh, Jack, don't leave me. It's too late, Billy. I'm cold, feeling sleepy. But, Jack, I can't do this on my own. Billy, look at the stars. The great polar bears of the past look down on us from those stars. Really? Yeah, so whenever you're alone, I will always be there to guide you. You know, kind of like Mufasa or Obi-Wan Kenobi or something. Oh, Jack, I don't understand. Blah, 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 Jack? blah, 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 oh, blah, blah, blah. Oh, Jack! Oh, sad. No. <laughs> Happy! She's Billy the bipolar bear. Mentally unstable and covered in hair. She's Billy the bipolar bear. Anyway. Thank you. So, yeah, like all of our puppets, Billy essentially is just a silhouette, but she has this one little cool device where she can change the shape of her eye. That's a surprise. Yes. Uh, that's, that's a bit drunk and hungover. Yeah. They, they all change, but like, isn't he clever? He does that for a living. Yeah. <laughs> Doctors, you should such... be applauding, really. <laughs> <laughs> but, so, you know, such extreme limitation and distillation of a, of a character uh, requires the audience to play along, yeah? Mm. Because performance is a bit of a relationship, yeah? So it has to be understood that we're not creating fully rounded characters. We are playing on stereotypes. Stereotypes. Of polar bears. Yes. Mm. I've lost my cue card. Where are we? Page 12. Page 12, the card. Look, but if the audience doesn't play along with our stereotypes uh, or understand it, they can take offence. Uh, for instance, we just did a show where, uh, well, our character, Billy the Bipolar Bear there, has many adventures. And on her latest adventure, she immigrated to the UK. She's a North Polish immigrant. Um, yeah. And she, uh, there she meets a uh, penguin called Jimmy. That's him. Hello. Oh, he speaks like this. And uh, following their kiss... Uh, their first kiss in the storyline. This is what happens. <laughs> what are you doing? A penguin? You don't want to get messed up with that crowd? Why not? Well, that would lead to interglacial marriage. Who are you people? Well, smear cream cheese on my ass and call me a bagel. You, 
You've never heard of the Jews, brothers? We're on a mission from God. One, two, three. Tradition, tradition, tradition. Ritual inhibition. Bacon and mixed marriage denied. We, the chosen ones of Israel, our hairs long and our skins pale. We travel the diaspora far and wide. And we wouldn't marry Gentiles, it reduces our percentiles. You gotta stick together, not divide. Marion, Marion, circumcise, keep the skin, say your prayers, eat a pig tonight. Marion, Marion, have ten kids, it's a sin, don't eat pig, eat a pig denied. There you go. So, so which synagogue are you from? Synagogue? No, Leon, you schmuck. She's from the North Pole. The North Pole? You should meet my cousin Alexei. He's a nice North Polish boy. Listen, lady, your people have suffered too long in the global warming holocaust. You need a land you can call home. Oh. Home. But wait, my home was melted. Mm, sad. Oh. Well, what about your promised land, the South Pole? The South Pole? Look, if you're persecuted and you have an ancient text, then you can claim your holy land. As it is written, ahem, Jacob, the polar bear, son of Abraham, the polar bear, wrestled with the angel and became known as Israel. <clears throat> and his children became the 12 tribes of Israel. Oh, wow, is that the Bible? No, it's a Wikipedia page I just wrote. <laughs> oh. Here comes Cousin Alexei. <laughs> hey, jump on my magic skidoo. I'm gonna take you, I'm gonna take you for the ride of your life. Do, 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 do. Oh, Alexei. Do, do, it's wonderful, just like home, but bigger. Focus, Billy. Better. Focus, Billy, look. There's more snow in the world. Shiny, frosty, and glaring, and no need to be sharing, cause there's no one else in sight. Excuse me. A whole new pole. A uh -huh, we were here fast. A sacred home. What the hell are you doing you? here? There's no one anywhere, not even there. We're literally alone here. Hey, let's build a settlement. We don't need consent. Because there's no one else around this pole. Piss off, it's my pole! Are you, are you quite sure this isn't a terrible idea, Alexei? And the plot continues, but... That's <laughs> no, sorry. I know we're running on a bit, so uh, to wrap up, here's why we, did, we told you about this. A certain Daily Mail correspondent named Alex Brommer took offence to that previous uh, sequence and tweeted, Dear at Puppethorn, your show, spoilt by grossly anti-Semitic content, probably actionable. Now, after rejoicing that we had upset the Daily Mail, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, thanks. Uh, we responded that we're sorry he felt that way and that one of us is in fact Jewish. Uh, and he replied, Technically, show terrific, but Jewish stereotypes, gratuitous. And he's right, they are gratuitous, but that is the medium we work with, and gratuity is what makes it work. We've whittled down all our characters to their simplest essences, and in the same way, we wanted to create characters who embodied the spirit of John Belushi, Dan Aykroyd, and, uh, well, orthodoxy, um, orthodox Jewry. But also, I mean, on a personal note, I've been obsessed with the concept of Jewish cowboys ever since my grandfather, Ashley Galinsky, told me that I, I'm apparently descended from a long live uh, from a long line of Hasidic horse thieves in Russia, which, you know, I'm just glad that I've given my ancestry a voice, finally, really. <laughs> so, uh, screw the Daily Mail. We're but, proud um, of you, Lou. Yeah. We're proud of you. Anyway, um, so, this extreme limiting of character, yeah, and this sort of constant gratuity in our show, is what makes Shadow Property so appropriate for satirical comedy, where we're constantly just making jokes at other people's expense, yeah? The stark and often very simple depictions clearly earmark that what we're doing is being slightly stupid, and, you know, making satire that, you know, should be taken with a massive pinch of salt. Um, generally, audiences can see that, you know, and they understand the absurdity of the medium. Mm. Um, and this is re refined essences of these characters. But occasionally, some characters might seem too distilled or too limited to some people, and they take offence. Um, but for us, that is where the fun and the humour is. Uh, creating characters that are simple and effective, but so simple, they almost cross that line. Yeah. Almost. 
We like to sort of sit on that line, leaning over a little bit. We do. It's but a nice yeah. place to be. Thanks Brilliant. so much for um, what, listening to us. Sorry we went over. And uh, if there are any floozies around, I haven't met any in three years. It'd be really nice. I'll be outside. Thank you. Thanks for having us.